So today we're adding a subtracting radical expressions. So the key idea here is it's just like combining like terms, but you don't have the variables, you have the radical. So you can only add or subtract if the radicand and the index are the same. So we're gonna write this as a side note. So only if index and radicand are the same. Remember that the index is that invisible number that is right there. That little number that goes on the side of the root, so that's called the index. The radicand is the number that goes under the root. The root. So now that we know that these guys are the same, that means I can add them together. So I'm going to do 2 plus 3, I get 5, and then square root of 3 doesn't change. Again, think about this as, as if you're combining like terms. If this can be combined with that, if the index and the radicand are the same, then you can add or subtract. If not, you just leave them, set them, leave them apart. On number two, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to simplify each and every radical. So I'm going to do this off to the side. And I remember I showed you that trick in the calculator where you get 50 and you put that in y equals and divide by x squared. And that's what we're going to do. 50 divided by x squared. And then on the table, you're going to look for those two, you know, the goal is, well, in the perfect world, we would have y be equal to 1, and then that will be a perfect square. But you don't have that scenario here. So we only have a 5 and a 2. Well, that means it's going to be 5 square root of 2. That's how you simplify that. So 5 square root of 2. We're going to do the same thing with square root of 80. So 8 is not a perfect square because I don't have y equals 1 right there. So I have 4 square root of 5. One more. So 125 divided by x squared. Again, 125 is not a perfect square. So I have 5 square root of 5 right there. Okay, now I'm going to bring them all back together. So I'm going to bring this two right here from the question times. Now I have square root of 50 is the same thing as 5 square root of 2. So I'm going to bring that down right there. So 5 square root of 2. Now minus, that minus is from the question. Square root of 80 is the same thing as 4 square root of 5 plus 3 from the question. Square root of 125 is 5 square root of 5. Now I'm going to multiply to deal with that. So 2 times 5, 10 square root of 2 right there. And then here I have 15. All right, now we're back to number one. I can only add or subtract if they have the same index or this with the same radicand. Like I have square root of two, square root of five, square root of 50, square root of five. I can definitely put these two together. There's nothing I can do about 10 square root of two. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys together. I cannot do anything with 10 square root of 2. So 15 minus 4 is 11. So plus 11 
square root of 5. There's nothing I can do there, so this is my final answer. 10 square root of 2 plus 11 square root of 5. One more just because. Now we have fourth root of 80. And fourth root of 5. Huh. They do have the same index, but they don't have the same radicand. But I'm going to try to simplify square root of 80 anyways. I mean, fourth root of 80. Like the trick from a couple videos ago, that I can still go to y equals, plug in 80 divided by x, but this time the index is 4, so my exponent that I'm dividing by right there has to be 4. Index is 4, exponent is 4. Mm, ah, looky there. So it's going to be 2 fourth root of 5. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this thing. So 12 right there from the question times, I'm simplifying, fourth root of 80 is the same thing as 2 fourth root of 5. Plus 18 fourth root of 5. All right, I'm going to multiply there. Okay, now they have the same index, they have the same radicand, so now I can add them together. So 24 plus 18 is 42, fourth root of 5. That's it.